Hi everyone and good Monday evening. It's weather for weather geeks time. It's the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast. Hope you had a good weekend. Uh, weather... Eh. <laughs> Saturday was pretty ugly. Sunday started pretty ugly, but finally we salvaged the second half of the day. Although it was on the cool side and we're in the waning hours of April, so let's do a review of the month. I'll get out of the way here. And It was nice that the month ended on such a beautiful note today. 67 this afternoon. Our warmest day since, well, last Monday in a rare warmer than average day here in this very chilly April of 2018. This will go into the record books as the coldest April here locally since 1975. A full five degrees below average. Counting them up, we had nine warmer than average days and 21 cooler than average days, including a couple of pretty impressive stretches here. I mean, this is a seven day stretch right here. Here's another six-day stretch. Here's a six-day stretch. Long stretches of cooler than average temperatures. The hallmark of this April. Of course, we also had some snow earlier on this month. Thankfully, it looks like we are done with snow for this season. All right, on the list of coldest Aprils on record here in the Youngstown area. Here's, here's what the list looks like. And again, 1975 tops the list. That was our most recent April that was as cool as this one, and it also is the coolest April on record here. Uh, full two and a half degrees cooler than this April. Um, but uh, also on the list, uh, some relatively recent years such as 1982 and 1989, but most of these years are, you know, this is quite a while ago. Most of these date back to the, to the 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s. So cooler Aprils have not been all that common in recent years, at least uh, extreme cool Aprils. All right, I did some digging in the record books as I'm prone to do, because I like facts and figures and cool little nuggets like this. And I looked at the uh, top 10 coolest Aprils on record and then looked at what happened in the summer season following those cool Aprils. Well, I found five cool summers, three average summers, and only two warm summers compared to the average, of course. So a warm summer after a top 10 cool April, pretty rare. Now, does that mean this summer is going to be cool? Not necessarily, but it's interesting when you look at that uh, going back uh, through a fairly small sample size, but still uh, a definite trend there that it's relatively rare to have a warmer than average summer after a very cool month of April. All right, the air mass is not only beautiful and comfortable, it's very, very dry. Relative humidity values here at 706 this evening at 17% here locally. That means that with a relatively calm wind tonight, Temperatures will drop pretty quickly. Um, you'll be surprised if you're out in a few hours after sunset how chilly it got all of a sudden uh, with this dry air mass. Really good radiational cooling conditions, dry air mass, clear skies, crystal clear skies overhead, and relatively light winds. That's a recipe for uh, temperatures dropping quickly once we lose the heating of the day. Also a nearly full moon up there. The moon was technically full yesterday morning, but it's still up at around 98% illumination, I believe, tonight. All right, across the country, uh, we're going to turn our attention to the west when it comes to active weather over the next few days. We'll enjoy another beautiful day here tomorrow, but uh, concern growing for severe weather each and every day uh, this week across the usual places. And these are actually places that have not had a lot of severe weather so far this season. Did you know there has not been a tornado yet this season in the, in the, uh, in the uh, state of Oklahoma? That's pretty remarkable. We've got a couple of tornadoes in Ohio. And uh, Oklahoma has been in a relative tornado drought. But that'll change this week. And it's not just Oklahoma, of course. There'll be several states that are under the gun for potentially severe weather. This is a look at tomorrow's outlook showing an enhanced risk of severe weather. Kansas, parts of Nebraska, Iowa, extreme northwestern Missouri. That's tomorrow. And then here's a look at Wednesday, an even bigger enhanced risk, and farther south as well. So you're really going to see the severe weather season ramping up out across tornado alley. All right, allergy forecast. This is really the only bad news for Tuesday. It's going to be another beautiful day, but if you are an allergy sufferer, the tree pollen's getting pretty high, especially on dry, sunny days. The, the pollen levels can get pretty high. Uh, the grass and weed pollen still playing catch up, but the tree pollen uh, can really skyrocket at this time of year. It's only going to get worse before it gets better, unfortunately. But again, that's the only fly in the ointment. Otherwise, yeah, great day tomorrow. I mean, we did 67 today. We'll tack on 10 more degrees tomorrow at 77 degrees. The record high is out of reach. That's 85. Sunrise tomorrow morning at 620 and almost exactly 14 hours worth of daylight for your Tuesday. And boy, are we going to see that uh, sunshine tomorrow. It's going to look just like today. I mean, not a cloud in the sky all day for your Tuesday. So enjoy a beautiful day. Now, as we go to the day Wednesday, most of the day is fine. In fact, I'm not real sold on what the model is doing here Wednesday evening. It's kind of aggressive 
bringing in a chance for a shower or a thunderstorm towards Wednesday evening. Uh, this does not have the support of a lot of other modeling, so I kept it out of our forecast. Uh, you know, it's something that can't 100% be ruled out, but if we were to see a renegade shower or storm Wednesday, it'd be real late in the day. Uh, again, small chance at this point. Higher risk of wet weather, I think, as we go into the end of the week on Thursday and Friday. We'll still be in the warm sector here on Thursday, but a fairly unstable air mass and a, and a front in the vicinity means we could see a round or two of showers and storms, and I suspect uh, we'll see that again on Friday. All right, tomorrow is May the 1st, so let's do our official May outlook. I showed you about a week to 10 days ago the uh, National Weather Service uh, preliminary outlook for the month of May. Here's my forecast for the month of May, and... Uh, it hasn't changed a whole lot from that uh, that uh, NOAA outlook I showed you a little while ago. I kind of liked the ideas then, and I, I like the ideas now as well, giving us a decent shot of warmer-than-average temperatures when you take the month as a whole, uh, the month of May. That should break our streak of cooler-than-average months after a very, very chilly March and April. Actually, we've been on a streak of very chilly months compared to average, with the exception of February. Our streak of chilly months compared to average goes all the way back to late last fall. And uh, so we should break that in May uh, with uh, the warmest anomalies out west. What about precipitation? Of course, uh, this becomes an interest for a lot of people as we get into this time of year, as we get into planting season, uh, gardening season, farming season. Uh, you know, don't see a real strong signal as far as precipitation, precipitation goes at this point. Right now I have our forecast as an average May precipitation-wise. I would say there's a somewhat higher chance of it being dry as compared to wet, and again, all this is relative to average, uh, a, a somewhat higher chance of it being a little, little bit on the dry side. But uh, I don't see enough of a signal to paint us in that kind of yellow dry area or green wet area just yet. So I think May is going to be a pretty nice month overall, especially compared to what has been a very chilly and at times snowy month of April. Thanks for watching this Monday evening edition of Weather for Weather Geeks. I'll have an update on the forecast, everything you need to know tonight on 21 News at 11. And our uh, forecast can be found on your device anytime. Make sure you're down you've downloaded the Storm Tracker 21 app. It is hands down the best local weather app for the Mahoning and Shenango Valleys.